Okay, hello again, everyone. Now we're going to talk about what the meaning of delta G is, actually, now that we have some perspective on this from having solved it a few times. So I went through for our steam reformation of methane and worked out delta G and Ka for a variety of temperatures. I recommend you do this too. Go ahead, play along, uh, take these four temperatures, feed it into Kcalc, see what you get. Um, I'm going to share with you what I get. So you'll remember we all did this together. Um, and these are all in kilojoules per mole, remember? Um, that uh, delta G for 298K is 141.9. And that, as you will have noticed, gets us uh, basically just about zero for the Ka, right? A very negative number. And if you try and do some math on this, we expect that the reaction does not proceed in the forward direction at all. The reaction, uh, if anything, goes backwards, right? Uh, that's what we expect to happen at those conditions. And if the reaction can't go backwards, because, for example, we have no reactants around, uh, the reactant just stays put, right? It does nothing. Nothing happens. Okay, 800K. So this is a pretty big jump, right? That's a, that's a reasonably high temperature. Uh, and we move delta G to be a smaller number, but it is still a positive number. I'm going to stop writing kilojoules per mole. Just assume that from there on out. And that gives us a Ka that um, is no longer something we can assume is really close to zero. Uh, but it's still not bigger than one, right? And if you look at what Ka is, being kind of a ratio between products and reactants, it sort of seems like if what we want is products, we need a number that's bigger than one. So that, that's a good guess for where the reaction starts running uh, forward. Uh, but as I have said earlier, this is now a number, it's, it's bigger than 10 to the negative 10th. So we've got to think about it. We've got to think, does this go forward or not? All right. Um, then next up, uh, 900, I get a delta G. That's a negative 2.63. So now we have a negative delta G. And uh, that goes with a Ka that is, in fact, larger than 1. And if we push this still further, we get to even more negative values of delta G, uh, which lead us to uh, even larger, uh, whoops, that's not right, uh, larger values of Ka. And so if you think back to Gen Chem, uh, or even uh, better yet, high school chemistry, there is a line sharp in the middle here, right? In fact, let's invite in my high school chemistry teacher. Hello, Mrs. McElhaney. Mrs. McElhaney would tell us that uh, this delta G, being a positive number, uh, is endergonic, and this one is exergonic, being a negative number. And so what we expect here is that this reaction will proceed spontaneously in the direction written, that is, towards hydrogen and um, carbon monoxide, whereas this one up here, 800, we don't expect to proceed at all. And um, Mrs. McElhaney was awesome, and uh, I honor her memory, but she was uh, teaching a simplification. And it's a fair simplification uh, because it neglects the impact of how we have set up our reactor, how we have constructed the contents of our reactor. This is just written uh, to be true no matter what we've stuck in the reactor or how much of it we've stuck there. Um, and so we are missing the impact of the chemical activities of the components that we've put in the reactor. So let's look at that now. So here we go. Let's take a deeper dive at 800K. And as you recall, at 800K, our delta G is still a positive number, 24.92 kilojoules per uh, mole, not kilogram. Uh, and that gives us a Ka that is not all that near to 1, but is a number that at least doesn't have a huge negative exponent on it. So let's look at two different cases for this. So the same reaction, uh, water gas shift, steam reformation of methane. And let's imagine that we had a one to one to one, pardon me, to one 
uh, equal molar ratio of all species. So we have hydrogen and we have uh, carbon monoxide and we have methane and we have water and they're all starting at a one to one to one to one ratio. So uh, what's our initial mole fraction? So our initial mole fractions, um, and I'm gonna write YW for water, um, are obviously 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0.25, 0.25. Okay, and then I want you to uh, imagine another case down here at the bottom where we just start one-to-one -one of reactants only. So we only start with water and methane and we completely omit everything else. So we have YCH4 equals 0.5 and we have Y water equals 0.5 and we have Y hydrogen equals Y CO and they're both zero. And we're gonna see what the results are for both of these for this case that uh, we would have thought was non-spontaneous. So that is for a not spontaneous thing, uh, we don't expect to create products. Uh, what we expect, in fact, is for this reaction to run backwards and create reactants. So I'm gonna hit pause here and I invite you to do the same. And I'm gonna go over to Excel and I'm gonna type all this in and I'm gonna resolve it. And then I'm gonna come back and tell you uh, what I got for the equilibrium uh, uh, composition of my reactor. And um, I really encourage you to do this as well uh, and up, you know, write it down somewhere to make sure you know how to do this yourself. Okay, did you do it? Hey, I, I figured it out. So uh, for the one-to-one -one reactants only, um, I get at the end that Y of CH4 uh, is the same thing as Y of H2O, uh, in which case they both kind of drop um, to about half of what they were, and that we get uh, hydrogen to be almost 40% of the mix, and we get CO to be what's left. Okay, so that definitely goes forward. Right, that goes forward pretty darn strongly, except we still have that positive delta G, but it goes forward pretty strongly because uh, there are no reactants to turn around and go backwards. Now, if we look at what happened when we had an equal molar mix of everything, that's kind of interesting. So we end up with YCH4, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna move things around, Y water, I'm gonna put those two next to each other, of not really changing much, 0.2 to, Two. Um, and then we have YCO and YH2. Um, and YCO goes up this infinitesimal amount. And H2 goes up uh, more because, of course, you get three for every one reaction. So this one still goes forward. And in fact, I uh, messed with things and did some math and found that if you have a mixture of one mole of hydrogen and one mole of CO starting in the mixture. And then you put in uh, about 0.75 of water and 0.75 CH4. Uh, in that case, that's where you get, under these conditions, no change. So that is the balance point between the reaction moving forward and the reaction moving backwards, pretty much nothing happens if that is your mixture. And so you see uh, that you can kind of trick a reaction into running in a direction that a traditional conception of, of delta G would not tell you to expect by changing what you've charged the reactor with. This also gives us a good way to uh, kind of pay attention to using reaction equilibrium in our design when we're trying to build a chemical plant. Because um, you see that the concentration of the products makes a big difference on your outcome, right? We get this much of a product versus getting this much of a product. That is a pretty significant 
uh, change in your outlet composition. And so it uh, behooves you uh, to pull products out of the reactant, a reactor as fast as you can get them out and thereby even drive this reaction um, as far as it'll go, right? If we can get the products out uh, as soon as they are created, this reaction never stops because it never reaches equilibrium. Um, so that's, um, that's all we're going to say about this. And I, again, encourage you to set things up in a spreadsheet and play around with this some, uh, because coming up, I'm going to be asking everybody to um, kind of design their best reactor to do this particular reaction.